I love you was Wagda Ronald taking you through the story for A Level Pure Mathematics. And this video I'm going to go through the topic of series or we can call it arithmetic progression and geometric progression. In short, it's called AP and GP. So this video is suitable for students in both senior 5 and senior 6 offering principal mathematics as part of their combination. So the course outline, let's first look through the course outline for this paper. So paper one, the course outline is divided in two five parts. The first part is algebra, which has two questions in section A, two questions in section B in an exam. And these are the topics. Then we have trigonometry, one question in section A, one question in section B in an exam. And these are the topics. Then geometry, one question in section A, one in section B. And these are the topics in an exam. Then vectors, one question in section A, one question in section B, and these are the topics. And lastly, calculus, where three questions come in section A, and three in section B, and these are the topics. So in this video, I'm going to go through the topic of series, which is under algebra. So we shall start with what we call arithmetic progressions. So an arithmetic progression is a series of terms with a constant difference. Now this word constant difference between any two consecutive terms. This difference is known as the common difference. So that word common difference will be, will be used more frequently in this part of arithmetic progression. Of an AP, so arithmetic progression in short it can be called an AP and is noted by a letter D. So letter D is used to denote common difference. For example, a series of the first five odd numbers is written as follows. So now, series and sequence the difference is that for a sequence, the terms are separated by commas, then for a series, the terms are separated by addition signs. So if you look at this series, from here to here, the difference is 2, and from here to here, the difference is 2, as you can see it here. Then from here to here, the difference is 2, and from here to here, the difference is 2. Now, because the difference is common, which is constant, it means that it has a common difference, D, which is equal to 2, and therefore it is now a, an AP. So the first term of an AP is denoted by a symbol A. So letter A is used to denote first term. Letter D is used to denote common difference. And letter N is used to denote the number of terms. For example, if this in this series, they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So in this series, N would be equal to 5. What about A? A would be equal to 1 because it's the first term 1. Then D would be equal to 2 because it is the common difference. So those are the three terms we need in an AP. First term, number of terms, and common difference. So let's look at some of the... Let's look at how to get the nth term of an AP. So at this step, we want to obtain an expression of the nth term of a geometric... Pro of an AP or arithmetic progression in terms of A, D, and N. So like we said... The series we saw in the previous slide was 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So how was it generated? When you have the first term and the common difference, can easily generate that series. So the first term is there. To get the second term, you be you add on the common difference, which is 2, to get the second term. Then to get the third term, you add the common difference on the second term to get the third term. Then the fourth term, add the add the common difference on the third term to get the fourth term which is seven then add the common difference to this to get the fifth term which is nine so this was a simple way but let's use these parameters a d and n remember we said a is the first term and d is the common difference like we did here to get the second term we added the common difference to the first term so that means that even here to get this second term we shall add the common difference d to this first term a similarly to get the third term we shall add common difference d to the second term as you can see it here so when you collect like terms you come up with a plus 2 d and to get the fourth term, add this common difference to this third term to come up with 
a plus 3d and similarly to get the fifth term it will be now a plus 4d so from the above table we see that there is a relationship between the subscript of t in the f so this is t the, this one denotes t1 denotes first term second term third term fourth term and fifth term so there's a, co a, a relationship between the subscript of t or the num the terms and the coefficient of d in the third column so if you look at this one this this is one and here it is zero then this is two and here it is one this is three and here it is two this is four and here it is three this is five and here it is four so what do you realize the relationship is that the coefficient of d is less than that is less than the subscript of t by one For, that's why you see here when this was two this was one when this was three this was two when this was four this was three and when this was five this was four therefore in terms of a d and n we shall come and write and say and so that when the subscript of t is n the coefficient of d will be n minus 1 as we have already seen in the previous slide therefore it implies that t n will be equal to a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d so this is the formula which is used to find the nth term of an ap where t n denotes the nth term so when they ask for any term, this that's the formula you can use. Then next, another term is the number of terms of an arithmetic progression. So given an AP, the number of terms of the given AP can be got by equating the last term. So last term is noted by a symbol small l of the given series to the nth term, Tn, of the same series. And thereafter, n is made the subject. So when they ask for number of terms, always remember that you have to equate the nth term of that series to the last term. Then make n the subject and that value of n will be equal to the number of terms of the arithmetic progression. What about sum? So sum of the first, you know this word first has to be there. So sum of the first n terms of an AP so the formula of the sum of the first n terms of an AP or arithmetic progression can be got from the formula of the in the mathematical logbooks. So if you look at your mathematical logbook, in the part of algebra, formula number three says that for the arithmetic sequence, I think we realize that, like I told you, the difference between a sequence and a series is that for a sequence, the terms are, are separated by a comma. That's why you see here commas. So for an arithmetic sequence, the sum of the first n terms will be given by n over 2 in brackets 2a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d. So this is the formula. So we are going to just copy it and put it here. So if you have forgotten this formula, you, you need to just go and look through your logbook. The good thing is that mathematical logbooks are allowed in an examination. So Sn is denotes the sum of the first n terms of an AP. Therefore, if I get S7, it implies that the one it is the sum of the first seven terms of the APs. So that knowledge you shall go through some of the questions. Question one says find the number of terms of the arithmetic progression that. So like we said the nth term is equated to the last term so in this case this is the last term of the ap and this is the first term of the ap and the common difference will be got by subtracting so the whole of this with this negative minus this with this negative to give you 8.25 so that will be the common difference we are calling it common difference because they already specified that is an ap so each time they talk about ap just know that they must be a common difference so we're getting the common difference, I'll come and say that for the number of terms of an in the AP, Tn is equal to L. Now Tn is given by this formula, I think you remember that, we derived it. Then the last term is this. Now the good thing, I know the value of A and the value of D. So when I substitute, I'll come up with that. 
Now in this case I have only one unknown that that is n, so I have to look for a way of making n the subject. When I open this bracket I'll come up with this, collect like terms I'll come up with this, then make n the subject should n will be equal to 13. So that is the number of terms of this AP. Then question 2 came from your name, 2011, question, paper 1, question 9a, and says, the first term of an AP is a half. The sixth term of the AP is four times, not this word, four times the fourth term. Find the common difference of the AP. So know that the nth term is always equal to that, therefore, they told us that the sixth term, which is T6, is four times the fourth term. So T6 is equal to four times four T. Therefore, when I use this formula, T6 will be equal to A plus 5D and T4 will be equal to A plus 3D. This four is maintained. The good thing I was given the first term as 0 0.5. Therefore, I'll come and substitute for the first term. And in this case, I have only one unknown, so I have to look for a way of collecting like terms and make D, put D on one side, and then make D the subject. So when I make D the subject, D will be equal to negative 3 over 14, and basically that is what they wanted. So now I shall go to question 3, which came from your NEB, 2007 paper 1, question 1, and says, the fifth term of an AP is 12 and the sum of the first five terms is 80. Sum of the first five terms means that you, they want S5. Determine the first term and the common difference. So fifth term is T5 which is A plus 4D and they told us it is equal to 12 so that is equation 1. Then they also told us the sum of the first five term, terms, so we know that Sn is that, therefore S5 will be equal to that, where there is n, you put there 5, and they told us it is equal to 80. So when I take this one this side, I'll come up with 2a plus 4d equal to 32. When I reduce by 2 throughout, I'll come up with a plus 2d equal to 16, and that is equation 2. So now we have two equations and two unknowns, we have to solve them simultaneously. So when I say equation 1 minus equation 2, I'll be able to come up with that. That 2D is equal to negative 4. Therefore, D will be equal to negative 2. So I've got the common difference, but I also have to get the first term. Therefore, I come and say that from equation 1, substitute for D and you'll be able to get the value of A as 20. Question 4 came from your name, 19. You name to 22, 2002, paper 1, question 9a, and says the 10th term of an AP is 29, and the 15th term is 44. Find the value of the common difference and the first term. Hence, find the sum of the first 60 terms. So we are told that the 10th term, so 10th term is given by A plus 9D, and they told us it is equal to 29. That is equation 1. What about the fifth, 15th term? 15th term is given by A plus 14D and they told us it is equal to 44. So those are two equations, two unknowns. When I subtract equation 1 from equation 2, I'll come up with 5D equal to 15. Therefore, D will be equal to 3. Then from equation 1, I can come and substitute for D and be able to get the value of A as 2. But they also told us to get the sum of the first 60 terms. So I'll come and say Sn is that. Therefore, S60 will be equal to that. Where there is n, we put there 60. That's why here you see 59. But the good thing, I also know the value of D and the value of A. Therefore, come and substitute for D and A to come up with a sum as 5430. Question 5 came from your name, 1996, paper 1, question 9b, and says, The sum of P terms of an AP is 2, and the sum of 2 terms is P. Find the sum of P plus 2 terms. So this is a somewhat tricky, but if you are consistent, you shall be able to come up with the required solution. So we shall come and see that. 
we already know that Sn is given by that. Therefore, the sum of P terms will become Sp, meaning that where there is P, you put there N. And they told us that is equal to Chu, that's why you equate it to Chu. So when I make 2a the subject, 2a will be equal to 2chu over p minus, p minus 1 multiplied by d, and that is equation 1. The result of that the sum of chu terms will be is equal to p, so s chu will be equal to p, and where there is n you put there chu. So still make 2a the subject, I'll come up with equation 2. So I have two equations, therefore I'm going to equate the two equations. When I equate the two and collect like terms, I'll come up with that. Then get the same for this part, it will be this. In the end, if you factorize out 2 here, I'll come up with this. So this is the difference of two squares, that's why you see a bracket of subtraction and bracket of addition. Therefore, the value of d, make d the subject, d will be equal to this, and that is equation 3. Therefore, the sum of p plus 2 terms it will be equal to sp plus 2, meaning that where there is n, you put there p plus 2. So that's why you see here p plus 2 and also here p plus 2. Now, substituting equation 1 into equation 4, you'll be able to come up with that. Remember, in equation 1, we had got the value of 2a. If you look at this in equation 1, we had 2a. So what, I'm, what, I'm, what I've done... I've substituted for 2a, and where there is 2a, I've put the other whole of this. That when I simplify, I'll come up with that. Simplify further to come up with that equation, equation 5. But I still have d, therefore I'll come and substitute equation 3 into equation 5. Remember, equation 3 had the value of d, so come and substitute for d to come up with that. Simplify, then simplify further, you'll be able to get the value of the value of SPS, sorry, SP plus 2 as negative in brackets P plus 2. So basically, that is what they wanted. And now we shall go to question 6, which came from UNEB 1995, paper 1, question 2a, and says the sum of an AP is 73. And the ninth term is 25. Determine Roman 1, the common difference of the AP and Roman 2, the number of terms that must be added to give a sum of 96. So A, the first term is 73. And the ninth term is 25. So T9 is A plus 8D and equal to 25. Come and substitute for a here to come up with this, therefore d is equal to negative 6, and that is what they wanted in Roman 1. Then Roman 2, they wanted the number of terms that must be added to give a sum of 96. That means that Sn is equal to 96. Now we should come and, come, and, come and get our Sn and equate it to 96. The good thing we have a and we have d, therefore come and substitute for a and d come up with that. So in this case I have only one unknown, so next is to expand, simplify, and I'll come up with a quadratic in o of n. So I have to solve it using either factorization or bulldozer method. So when I use factorization bulldozer method, I'll come up with n as 24 and n as 4 over 3. But number of terms cannot be in fraction form, therefore n is equal to 24 terms. So question 7 came from UNEB 1994, paper 1, question 2b, and says, In an AP, u1, u2, u3, up to infinity, or up to where, we don't know, u4 is equal to 15, and u6 is, u16 is equal to negative 3. Find the greatest integer n, such that un is greater than or equal to 0. Then determine the sum of the first n, capital N terms of the progression. So u4 is the fourth term, the same as t4, and is equal to a plus 3d, but the total is 15. 
the new 16 is a plus 15d and the total is equal to negative 3. Now we have two equations and two unknowns so we can solve them simultaneously. Therefore equation 2 minus equation 1 will give us 12d equal to negative 18. That means that d is equal to negative 1.5. Then from equation 1, I'll be able to get the value of A as 19.5. Then for UN, remember this is what was given, that UN must be greater than or equal to 0. So if I come and substitute, UN is the nth term. So th that's why you see here the formula for the nth term. Substitute for A and for D, and be able to remain with only capital N as the only unknown. So simplify, you'll be able to come up with that and therefore the value of capital N is less or equal to 14. So we shall conclude that the greatest value is of N is 14 because this expression that N is less than or equal to 14 means that N cannot exceed 14. Therefore the sum of this first capital N terms is equal to S14 and therefore S14 will be equal to that. So where there is N we shall put there 14 and then substitute for a and for d to come up with the, val the sum as 136.5. Then question 8 came from UNEB 1993, paper 1, question 3a, and say that Roman 1, show that lean 2 to power r, uh, where r is 1, 2, 3, and so on, is an arithmetic progression. So this lean means the natural log. I think you saw it under calculus. Then Roman 2, okay, let's start with the Roman 1. So Roman 1, the uh, the term in the rth earth, earth term is equal to lean 2 to power r. Therefore, the first term is t1, where there is r, r I put 1 to come up with lean 2. What about the second term? Second term is t2, where there is r I put 2. These two can go this side to come up with 2 lean 2. Then the third term will be T3, where there is R I put 3, and that 3 can go this side to come up with 3 lean 2. Therefore, remember that for AP, there should be a common difference. So the difference between T2 and T1 will be equal to lean 2. And the difference between T3 and T2 is also lean 2. Now, since this difference is the constant, it implies that there is a common difference, and therefore it is an AP. That was Roman 1. Then Roman 2 says, Find the sum of the first 10 terms of the progression. So Sn is that, therefore S10 will be where there is n you put there 10. After that you also substitute for A and for D to come up with 55 lean 2 as this required sum. Then Roman 3 Roman 3 says, determine the least value of m for which the sum of the first two m terms exceeds 883.7. So we know that Sn is that. What about Sm? So S2m must exceed 883.75. This is what we are given in the question. Therefore, substitute where there is n, you put there 2m to come up with that. And whether it's A you put lean 2, whether it's D you put lean 2. Simplify, you'll come up with that. Open brackets, you'll come up with that. Rearrange to get this. Therefore, this is a quadratic. But remember, this is an inequality. I think you remember the topic of simultaneous equations and inequalities. We saw how to solve inequalities. So that is what we are going to do. We shall come here and do our tabulation. But first of all, we need to get the critical values. So critical values, it was a quadratic, so you can solve using bulldozer method. And the critical values will be this and that. Now that we know the critical values, we can tabulate our results. So the first one is the values less than this, it will, the inequality is that. And when you substitute a value less than that in this expression, you will come up with a positive. 
Then between this and this, the inequality is that, and substitute any value, you come up with a negative. Then greater than this, the value inequality is that, and substitute you get a positive. Therefore, the solution set is this and that. Because these are, remember we said it was greater than zero, so yeah, greater than zero meaning that it has to be positive. So it positive there is this and also this. But M cannot be less than negative this, therefore M is greater than that. Less than because it cannot be a negative because of the number of terms. Now, because it's greater than that, it implies that and it should be a whole number, it implies the least value of m must be 25. Because 20, if I say 24, 24 will be less than this. But here they said m must be greater than this. So it should be the next whole number. Then question 9 says, an AP contains n terms. The first term is 2 and its common difference is 2 over 3. If the sum of the last four terms is 72 more than the sum of the first four terms, find n. So we are going to first tabulate, we are going to first list down the first four terms and also the last four terms. So the first four terms, the first term is this. Then second term will be good by getting the first term, adding, add the common difference to come up with 8 over 3. Then the third term, Add, this, add a common difference to this to come up with 10 over 3. Fourth term, add 2 over 3 to this to come up with 4. So those are the first four terms, and when you add them, you come up with 12. When you add this, 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 and that. What about the last four terms? So the very last term, I think you remember the formula, the last term is a plus, a plus n minus 1d. So this is a n minus 1 and this is d. I think you remember that formula. What about the second last term? Second last term means that here you subtract off 1 to come up with this. Third last term, you subtract off 1 to come up with this. Fourth last term, you subtract off 1 to come up with that. Now when I add all these ones, I'll be able to come up with the sum as this. So here they have told us that if the sum of the last four terms is 72 more than the sum of the first four terms, find n. So not that. So with the, the, now that you have got the sums, you can go and put in and get the relationship of the two. So they said sum of last four terms is equal to sum of first four terms plus 72. Come and substitute last four terms. First four, first four terms and 72 is there. Now I have only n as the only unknown, so I have to simplify and make n the subject, and n will be 31. Then question 10 says if log base x of y, log base y of z, and log base z of x are in an arithmetic progression with the middle term a and the common difference d. Prove that a squared d is equal to h cubed minus 1. So they told us the middle term is a, so she'll come and say that this is a, meaning the next term will be a plus d, and the, sum before, and the value before that will be a minus d. Therefore, when I multiply all these ones, I'll come up with this. So this is that, this is that, this is that. So when I apply this with this with this, I come up with this, this, that. Then for this side, this one and this one's difference of two squares, that's why you see here a squared minus d squared. And this a is maintained. So when I, con when I convert to base 10, this one will be equal to log base 10 of y over log base 10 of x and this will be log base 10 of z over log base 10 of y think remember that under logarithm this topic of logarithms and source available on this platform so this is log base 10 of x over log base 10 of z so when you look at this you realize that this one and this one can cancel this one and this one can cancel this one and this one can cancel. So what does that mean? It implies that the whole of this one is equal to 1. 
there are five just rearranging the give in the required ex format and that will be the required expression so that has been arithmetic progression i believe by now you have mastered arithmetic progression so what you need to remember is that for arithmetic progression there must be a common difference now shall go to the other part which is called geometric progressions so ge a geometric progression is a series of terms with a constant ratio between any two consecutive terms ratios are same as division this ratio is known as the common ratio of a geometric progression and is noted by symbol r remember for ap there was a common difference and it was noted by symbol d and in gp we have a common ratio and is noted by symbol r for example consider a series which is that you realize that this divided by this is 2 then this divided by this is also 2 this divided by this is also 2 this divided by this is also 2 so because the ratio is constant imply that there is a common ratio and that ratio will be r equal to 2 now just like it was in ap even in gp the first term is noted by symbol a and the number of terms is noted by symbol small n So now we shall go through the nth term of a geometric progression. So at this step, we want to obtain an expression of a geometric progression in terms of a, r, and n, just like we did for an AP. So we use mu1 to denote first term, mu2 to denote second term, mu3 to denote third term, mu4 fourth term, and mu5 fifth term. So if I know the first term and the common ratio, it means that to get the second term, I'll say first term multiplied by the common ratio to come up with the second term. Then second term multiplied by the common ratio to come up with the fourth term. Sorry, third term. Then third term multiplied by the common ratio to come up with the fourth term. And fourth term multiplied by the common ratio to come up with the fifth term. So similarly, if I have a R and N, it implies that if I know the first term, second term will be more good by multiplying A with R second term a r with r to come up with that a r squared to come up with which will be the third term then similarly a r cubed which will be the fourth term and a r to power four will be the fifth term now just like it was for a p even here i realize that there is a relationship between the subscript of mu and the power on r so this and the difference is one so if this is three this is two if this is 4, this will be 3. If this is 5, this will be 4. Meaning that if here there is n, here it will be n minus 1. Now when you know that, we shall come and say that if the subscript on mu is n, then the power on r will be n minus 1. Therefore, mu n will be equal to a r to power n minus 1. So this will be the formula for the nth term of a geometric progression. The next is the number of terms of a GP, just like it was even here in AP, even here, the number of terms are got by equating the nth term of the GP to the last term, and then make n the subject. Then the sum of the first n terms of a GP, so the sum of the, the formula for the sum SN of the first n terms of a GP can be got from the formula in the mathematical logbooks. So if you look at the mathematical logbooks, formula number four it says for a geometric sequence this. So even here, so the mathematical logbook can also be used to get the last term. If you look at the nth term, this will the nth term of AP, and this will be the nth term of a GP. So if you have forgotten it, just come on your sequence and look at the last term. That will be the nth term. So our interest to get the sum, so the sum of the first n terms is given by a, a in brackets r to power n minus 1 over r minus 1. Or you can interchange this with this to come up with 1 minus a r to power n over 1 minus r. So now why do we have two formulas? Because the reason is to look for a way of eliminating a negative. For example, if r is greater than 1 then you can use this formula so that we deal with positives because r minus 1 will be a positive 
But if R is less than 1, it implies that R minus 1 will be negative. Therefore, in that case, we use these other formulas that we only deal with positives. So the only reason is to eliminate the negatives, but if you are convert with the negatives, you can use on we can only choose one formula and work with that. So that is the formula for getting some of the first in terms of a GP. The another term is called sum to infinity. So sum this formula is also available in the mathematical logbook. So if you look at your mathematical logbook here, it says that if R is greater than negative one but less than one, it implies the the sum as n tends to infinity will be a over one minus r. So this is what we call sum to infinity. I think we are using this because here yeah, the value of r is less than one. So that is the, where this formula is coming from. So always remember that if you have forgotten it, you can easily refer to your mathematical logbook. So that now let's go through some of the questions. Question one says, find the number of terms in the GP, which is this, and then find the sum of the GP. So the number of terms will equate the last term to the nth term. So the common ratio is that. So this divided by this gives you the common ratio as a half. Therefore, for the number of terms, equate the nth term to the last term. Nth term is a r at power n minus 1, and the last term is 3 over 64. So I know R and I know A. A is 3. Therefore, I can substitute for R and for A to come up with this. So here is only N, which is the only unknown. Therefore, this 3 and this 3 can cancel to remain with 1 over 64. And 1 over 64 is the same as 1 over 2 to the power 6, which is there. Therefore, this, uh, this system base, so you can cancel it and remain with only the powers. You get the powers to come up with n minus 1 equal to 6. Therefore, n is equal to 7. But they also told us to get the sum of the GP. Now we know that the, the GP has 7 terms. Therefore, we need S7. So, Sn is that. Therefore, S7 will be that. Substitute for A, for R, and for N. Then use the calculator to come up with 381 over 64. Then question 2 came from your neighbor 2018, paper 1, question 3, 13a, and says the first three terms of a GP are 4, 8, and 16. Determine the sum of the first 10 terms of the GP. So A is the first term is that is A. Then common ratio is good by saying this divided by this. That's why I see here R. Therefore, the sum of the first 10 terms will be S10. And the good thing, we know A and we know R and know the, num the value of N. Therefore, using the calculator, I'll come up with 4092 as the answer. Then question 3 came from UNEB 2013, paper 1, question 2, and says, In a GP, the difference between the fifth term, fi sorry, the difference between the fifth and second term is 156. The difference between the seventh and the fourth term is 1404. Find the possible values of the common ratio. So you already know that the nth term is that. Therefore, the difference between the fifth and second is u5 minus u2. And u5 will be a r at power 4. Then u2 will be a r, a, just a r. So when I make a, when I factor out a, I'll come up with a in brackets, r at power 4 minus r which will be equal to 156. Therefore, if I out R still, we'll come up with AR in brackets R cubed minus 1. Then we also say the difference between the 7th term and the 4th term will be U7 minus U4. Now, U7 is AR to power 6 and U4 is AR to power 3. U4 is AR to power 3. Therefore, substitute and factorize out R cubed to come up with A R cubed in brackets R cubed minus 1. Those are two equations and you have to solve them spontaneously. Now since they are the parameter the parameters are joined by product imply that the easiest way is to divide. 
So when I divide equation 2 by equation 1, I'll come up with that. So in this case, the whole of this cancels, and here A cancels, then here 1 R cancels, remain with R squared. Therefore, I'll come up with R squared equal to 9, because this over this will give you 9. When I make R the subject, R will be plus or minus 3, so those are two possible values of the common ratio. Then question th 4 came from your name 2012, paper 1, question 5, and says, The sum of the first n terms of a GP is this. Find the nth term as an integral power of 2. So, Sn is equal to this. This is the formula and it will be equivalent to this one which has been given. So, by comparison, R is equal to 4. So, this one, the one which has power n is 4. That's why you call it a power 4. Then outside, then now R minus 3 will be R min 4 minus 1 is 3. That is why you see 3 here. So this 3 denotes R minus 1. Then the one left outside will be A. Therefore, A is also equal to 4. So you come and say that nth term UN is given by A R to power N minus 1. Therefore, come and substitute for A and for R to come up with this. Now this one still can be this and this cancels remain with 4 to power n. Now 4 to power n is the same as 2 to power 2n. So question 5 came from your neighbor 2007 paper 1 question 14 and says what is the smallest number of terms of the GP this that can give a sum greater than 500,000. So first term will be 5, common ratio will be 10 divided by 5 which is 2 and they told that the sum must be greater than 500,000. Therefore Sn is given by this formula, I think you know that from the, our mathematical logbook, so you make it greater than 500,000. Then substitute for A and for R to come up with this line. Then this is 5 over, five over 1, so make, take this 5 this side to come up with this greater than 100,000. Make 2, n, 2 to power n the subject and 2 power n will be greater than 100001. Now this n is a variable power therefore we shall introduce in logarithm. Therefore n will be greater than log this over log this which is here. So when I use the calculator I'll come up with n greater than 16.61. But n has be an integer, therefore n will be equal to 17 terms. Then now we shall go to question 6, which came from UNEB 2005, paper 1, question 11b, and says, A geometric progression has a common ratio r less than 1. g1, which is the first term, is 15, and sum to infinity is 22.5, where s infinity is mid not sum to infinity. And g1 denotes the first term. Find Roman 1 the value of R and Roman 2 the ratio of G2 to root 3. So we know U1 is A which is 15 therefore sum to infinity is A over 1 minus R and is equal to 22.5 as was given here. Substitute for A to come up with that and cross multiply to come up with that. Then look for making R as a subject. Take this one this side to come up with this. Therefore R is 1 over 3. Then ratio u2 over u3 is the same as the reciprocal of r, which will be 3, because the reciprocal of this will be 3. Therefore, this ratio will be 3 to 1. Then question 7 came from UNEB 2002, paper 1, question 9b, and says, A cable 10 meters long is divided into 10 pieces, whose lengths are in a geometric progression. The length of the longest piece is 8 times the length of the shortest piece. Calculate to the nearest centimeter the length of the third piece. So let the first term be the first term A be the shortest piece and the last term U10 be could be the longest piece. We know that the nth term is that, therefore U10, U10, it was given that U10 is 8 times the shortest, so U10 will be 8 times A. 
I know that u10 is a r at power 9. Therefore, a can cancel to remain with a r at power 9 equal to 2 to power 3. When I when I put tube root on both sides, I'll come up with r at power r at tube being equal to 2. Therefore, r is the tube root of 2, which will be 1.2599. Then Sn is that, because it's the GP, implying that S10 will be equal to that. So substitute for R to come up with that, and it told us that the total, the total is 10. That is why you see that the sum is 10. Therefore, when I use the calculator, the whole of this bracket will be equal to this, 34.931. This is A, you maintain it. Therefore, make A the subject, and A will be equal to that. But in the question they said, calculate to the nearest centimeter the length of the third piece, so they want mu3. So mu3 is given by the formula ar squared, so come and substitute for a and for r to come up with the third piece as that. But they wanted in centimeters, so it will, in centimeters this one will be converted to this. But they also wanted to the nearest centimeter, so you run off, the, you run off to the nearest whole number, which is 45. Then question 8 came from your name 2000, paper 1, question 9a, and says the nth term of, so this is of, of a GP is this, is given by that formula. Given that u1 is that, u2 is that, and u3 is that, find the values of a, b, and c. So yeah, we're going to have the nth term, we are going to come and substitute u1 where there is n, you put there 1, there you see a 1 and 1 here, and the total is equal to 4. That will simplify and call it equation 1. What about u2? Where there is n put there 2, simplify and call it equation 2. Where there is u3, where there is n, you put there 3, simplify and call it equation 3. So we have 3 equations and 3 unknowns, so we have to solve them simultaneously. So equation 3 minus equation 1 will give me that. Will give me 24a plus 2, 2b is equal to 42. So reduce to come up with 12a plus b is equal to 21 and call it equation 4. What about equation 3 minus equation 2? I'll come up with 18a plus b equal to 33 and call it equation 5. So now we have the, in this 4 and 5 we have two equations and two unknowns. So I come and say that equation four minus equation five minus equation four will give me six a equal to twelve. Therefore, a is equal to two. From equation four, this one I'll come and get the value of b as negative three. From equation one, we shall come up with we shall substitute for a and b to come up with the value of c as one. Therefore, a is two, b is negative three, and c is one. So now we shall go to question 9, which came from UNEB 1996, paper 1, question 4. and says, find how many terms of the series this must be taken so that the sum will differ from the sum to infinity by less than 10 to power negative 6. So we know that the first term is 1 and the common ratio is this divided by this, which is 0 0.2. The we'll come and say the sum to infinity minus sum of n first n terms will be less than 10 to power negative 6, so that's what this statement means. So come and substitute sum to infinity is this, sum of n terms is that, and this one is maintained. Then a, a over 1 minus r is common, so factorize it out here, you remain with 1, and here you remain with 1 minus r to power n. So in this case, 1 and 1 cancel, so I remain with r at power n, and it will be positive. Therefore, I'll come and say that this one now becomes that. Now, substitute for a and for r, uh, a is that, and r is 0 0.2. Therefore, I have only n as the only unknown. So take the whole of this, this side, we'll come up with this. And when I divide... When I put log on both sides, I think realize that here the inequality sign was less than and here it is greater than. Why? Because when you divide an inequality when you divide it by a negative number, you it changes it changes sign. Therefore, this log 0 0.2 is a negative. 
if you press the calculator, you realize this is the negative. Therefore, this sign has to change from less, if it was less than, to now become greater than. And now use the calculator, I'll come up with that. But n is a whole number, therefore it will be 9 terms. Then question 10 says, the sum of n terms of a series, this, of a series is that. So this one denotes the sum. Roman 1, show that the terms of this series are a GP. So let's start with that. So SN is equal to that. Meaning that if I want to get the first term, uh, first term, the sum of the only one term will be put here 1, while there's n put there 1, will come up with 1. Then S2, sum of the first two terms is 3, sum of the first three terms is 7, and sum of the first four terms is 15. Therefore, if I want to get the first term, it will automatically be the sum of only one term, which is 1. Then the second term, I'll have to subtract this S1 from this to come up with 2. And the third term, I'll have to sub subtract S2 from S3 to come up with 4. Fourth term, I'll subtract S3 from S4 to come up with 8. Therefore, if I divide second term with first term, I'll come up with 2. Third term with second term, I'll come up with 2. Fourth term with third term, I'll come up with 2. Now, the ratio is constant, meaning that it is a GP. Then question 2 says, sorry, Roman 2 says, hence find the, the first term common ratio and the sum of the second set of n terms. So for the second set of n terms, first term will be equal to un plus 1 because the last term for the first set is n. Therefore, the, for, therefore the first term for the second set will be n plus 1. So come and substitute sn plus 1 minus sn will give you this. Use indices, you'll come up with that. And this one is the same as this. Therefore, 2, n, 2 to the power n is common. Factorize it out, you'll come up with 2n as your first term. Common ratio is 2, so it remains, it doesn't change because it's a constant. Then Sn is that, meaning that sum of the first, sum of, sum from one, n equal to 1 up to n is equal to 2n will be this, where there is n, you put there 2n. Therefore, sum of the second set of n terms will be S2n minus Sn to give you this. Simplify to give you that this and therefore 2 to power n is common pull it out here remain with 1 2 to power n which is there and here remain with only 1 so now we shall go to question 11 which says that the second the second and third terms of a gp are 24 and 24 in brackets alpha minus alpha plus 1 respectively find alpha if the sum of the first three terms of the progression is 76 So the second term is AR and is equal to 24. Third term is AR squared and is equal to 24 in brackets alpha plus 1. Equation 2 divided by equation 1 will give you this. So this is here divided by this and also this divided by that. You will come up with R equal to alpha plus 1. Now from equation 1, come and substitute for R to come up with 20, A equal to 24 over alpha plus 1. Now, Sn is given by that formula, therefore S3 will be equal to this, where there is A, you put there this, which is here. Then where there is R, I put alpha plus 1, and they said it's equal to 76. We we'll simplify, I'll come up with that. So in this case, I have only alpha as the only unknown, so I'm going to look for a way of making alpha the subject. So cross multiply gives you that, expand this gives you this. And expand this gives you that. Then expand this one further to give you this. Collect like terms to give you that. Factorize out for alpha to give you that. That for alpha is equal to zero or the whole of this is equal to zero. 
for alpha equal to 0 r will be equal to this r will be equal to 1 but alpha cannot be equal to 0 because the common ratio can never be equal to 1 then for this one equal to 0 we shall f use either factorization or bulldozer methods when i use factorization i'll come up with the values as i'll come up with that therefore alpha will be equal to negative a third or a half Then question 12 says the sum to infinity of the terms of a GP with common ratio R is P. And the sum to infinity of the tubes of the terms is 3P tubed. Determine the value of the determine the value of R and hence find the value of P given that the sum of the first four terms is 45 over 8. So sum to infinity is given by that and is equal to P then for the tubes. It means that you keep on tubing, tube the first term, also tube the common ratio to come up with this. Substituting equation 1 in equation 2 will give us that. So where there is P, you have put there this. Therefore, this A can cancel to remain with here 1 and also here 1. Then get the reciprocal or cross multiply. Take this on this side and this on this side to come up with this. Open brackets to come up with that. So when I expand this, I'll come up with this. And when I expand this, I'll come up with that. Expand this further to come up with this. And collect like terms. Therefore, r is equal to 1 or r is equal to negative 2 or r is equal to 0 0.5. Therefore, sum of the first four terms, the size for sum of the first four terms is 45 over 8. Therefore, S4 will be equal to 45 over 8. Make A the subject, A will be equal to this, and that is equation 3. So, substituting equation 3 into 1 gives that, which can be simplified to give that therefore when r is equal to 1 p is that which is infinity and when r is equal to negative 2 p will be equal to that and when r is equal to 0 0.5 p will be equal to that so that is what they wanted so now we shall go to both ap and gp combined so some we have what you have dealt with has been first ap alone then second gp alone but sometimes questions can have both AP and GP combined. So that is what we are going to look at. So question 1 came from UNEB 2018, paper 1, question 13b, and says, An arithmetic progression has a common difference 3. A GP has a common ratio 2. A sequence C is formed by subtracting the terms of the AP from the corresponding terms of the GP. The third term of the sequence is 4. The sixth term of the sequence is 79. Find the first term of the AP and of the GP. So it, this is easily done by tabulating some of the values. So we need the first term, we need the third term, and also the sixth term. So we shall start with the GP. GP, the first term, let it be A1. Second term will be a1 times, sorry, third term will be a1 times a1 r squared. So r is 2. That is why you see a 2 squared, which will be for a1. Sixth term is a r to the power 5. That is why you see a 2 to the power 5, and it will be 32 a1. For the ap, let the first term be a2, meaning that the second term will be, sorry, third term will be a plus 2d. So 2 times d, d was 3, it was given as 3, therefore it gives you a plus 6. Sixth term is a plus 5d, so 5 times d, which is 3, to give you a2 plus 15. Therefore, the sequence has subtracting, so this minus this gives you that, this minus this gives you this, and this minus this gives you that. But they say that this one is equal to 4. The whole of this is equal to 4. So you come up with equation 1. Then also this one is equal to 79. So you'll come up with 
equation 2 so we have two equations and two unknowns so equation 2 minus equation 1 will give you that therefore 28 a1 is equal to 84 meaning that a1 is equal to 3 then from equation 1 we shall come and substitute for a1 to be able to get the value of a2 as 2 therefore the first term of the ap is 2 because a2 was ap then the first term of the gp is 3 because a1 was gp Question 2 came from your 2015, paper 1, question 1, and says the first term of an AP is equal to the first term of a GP, whose common ratio is a third, and the sum to infinity is 9. If the common difference of the AP is 2, find the sum of the first 10 terms of the AP. So for the GP, S infinity is given by that formula. The cross multiply and substitute for R and for sum to infinity will give you A as 6. Now they told us that the first term of the AP is equal to the first term of the GP, meaning that for the AP, A is also equal to 6. Therefore, you come and say that for the AP, A is 6, D is 2, and N is 10. Therefore, sum will be given by, sum of the first 10 terms will be given that formula and it gives you 150 as the answer. Then question 3 came from your neighbor 1995, paper 1, question 2b, and says, A GP and an AP have the same first term. The sum of their first, second, and third terms are 6, 10.5, and 18, respectively. Calculate the sum of their fifth, fifth term, fifth terms. So sum of the first term is A plus A because they have the same first terms and it will be equal to 6, therefore A will be equal to 3. Some of the second terms for the GP to be A R, for the AP to be A plus D, and is equal to 10.5. Therefore, we know that A is 3, so come and substitute for A to be, to be able to come up with an equation with R and D. Then some of the third terms for the GP is that, for the AP is that, and it was equal to 18. Substitute for A, and come up with an equation with R and D. So these are two equations and, and two unknowns, so we can solve them simultaneously. So equation 2 minus 2 times equation 1 gives you the 3R squared minus 6R equal to 0. Factorize out 3R to come up with that, therefore R is equal to 0 or R is equal to 2. But R can't be equal to 0, therefore R is equal to 2. Then from equation 1, I'll come up with this, therefore the value of D is 1.5. And the sum of the fifth terms for the GP is AR at power 4, and for the AP is A, power, A plus 4D. Come and substitute for A, R and D to come up with the sum as 57. Then question 4 came from your neighbor 1992, paper 1, question 2, and says, The first, fourth, and eighth terms of an AP form a GP. If the first term is 9, find Roman 1, the common difference of the AP, Roman 2, common ratio of the GP, and Roman 3, the difference in the sums of the first six terms of the progressions. So this means that the first term of the AP is equal to the is the same as the first term of the GP. Then the fourth term is the second term of the GP, and the eighth term is the third term of the GP. So I shall come and say that. We already know that the first term is the same. So the fourth term of the AP is the second term of the GP. Therefore, come and substitute for A to come up with that. Therefore, the first equation of R and D will be that. Then also, the eighth term of the AP is the, is the third term of the GP. Substitute for A to come up with that. Therefore, equation 2 is that. Now, those are two equations and two unknowns, so I have to solve them simultaneously. Equation 2 minus 7 times equation 1 gives you 9R squared minus 21R equal to 12 equal to negative 12. So rearrange to get a quadratic and solve it using Boulder's method of factorization to come up with this. R is equal to 4 over 3 or R is equal to 1. 
but r cannot be equal to 1, therefore r is equal to 4 over 3. Now from equation 1, d, can be, d will be equal to 1. Therefore the common difference of the AP is 1 and the common ratio of the GP is 4 over 3. So that was Roman 1 and Roman 2. Roman 3 say the difference of this in the sums of the first six terms of the progression. So we'll get the sum of the first six terms of the AP and also sum of the first six terms of the GP. So for the AP, SN is given by that, therefore SAP will be this, N is 6, you will come up with 69 when you substitute. Then for the GP, SN is that, therefore S6 will be given by that. Substitute, use a calculator and come up with this. Therefore the required difference will be equal to this minus this to come up with this as the answer. Then question 5 says the first term of an AP and the GP and GP are each equal to 2 over 3. So they both have the same first term. Their common difference and common ratio are equal to x and the sum of their first three terms are also equal. Roman 1, find the two possible values of x and Roman 2, the sum of the first 20 terms of each possible arithmetic progression. So for Roman 1, we know that a is that and r is equal to d and is equal to x. n is 3. Therefore, SAP is equal to SGP. So come and substitute from the formula, then substitute the given values n, put their 3 here, and also 3 here, put there the value of a, which is 2 over 3, and d, which is x. Then this side, put the value of a, which is 2 over 3, and r, which is x. Then simplify and get the LCM. Simplify further, you'll be able to come up with that quadratic. So you have to solve that quadratic to get the values of x. So when I use bold as a method, the values of x will be negative 0 0.5 and 4. Then Roman 2, SAP is given by that formula, therefore it gives you that. Now when x is equal to negative 0 0.5, the sum will be equal to negative 2, 4, 5 over 3. And when x is equal to 4, the sum will be equal to 2, 3, 2, 0 over 3. So we have covered now AP and GP so far. So now we are going to compound interest. So the very formula we used in all level is the same formula we are going to use in this topic. Now in this, and the difference that in here in L level, we split it into two. You can either deposit once or you deposit every year. So in all level, we only saw the option of depositing once. But in a level, we add on another option where you, have, you can deposit every year. So let's start with the one for all level where one has to deposit once. Now suppose an amount P is deposited in the bank at the beginning of a particular year and it accumulates at a compound interest rate of R percent per annum. If this money is left in the bank for any years without making any withdrawals, it will accumulate to an amount AN, given by the formula that AN is equal to P in brackets 1 plus R over 100 everything raised to the power N. So that is the very formula we used in all levels. So let's see how it can be used to answer the following question. So question one says, Stanley invested £200,000 in a business at a compound interest of 15% per annum. Find the time to the nearest year. It takes to reach more than £600,000. So first of all, we know that the formula of amount is that. Therefore, we shall come and substitute. This is the principal, the one invested, then this is the rate, and the n is what we want. This inequality sign is because of this word more than, more than means greater than, so greater than 600,000. 
they're not like this 200,000 this side and I'll come up with this part because 600,000 divided by 200,000 gives you 3. Then here 1 plus 0 0.15 gives you 1.15 to power n. So this is a variable power so I'll introduce log on both sides and I'll come up with n greater than this. Using a calculator I'll come up with this by the side to the nearest here therefore n will be equal to 8. Then question 2 came from UNEB 2001, paper 1, question 10b, and says, A man deposits shillings 800,000 into his savings account, on which his interest is 15% per annum. If he makes no withdrawals, after how many years will his balance exceed 8 million? So the side exceeds, so the amount must exceed, so greater than 8, 8 million. Then shall come and substitute for amount is that x form of amount then we substitute for p is there principal r is the rate which was 15 and n is what we want so like we did we are going i'm going to take this one this side to come up with 10. then variable power you introduce log you introduce logarithm therefore n is greater than this which will approximate to 17 years The, then question 3 came from UNEB 1999 paper 1 question 4 and says the population of a country increases by 2.75% per annum. How long will it take for the population to triple? So the total population is given by this formula and then for it to triple it means that this is now 3p, the current one. And the rate was given as 2.75. So this P can cancel and remain with 3 this side equal to this plus this gives you 1.0275 raised to the power N. That's the variable power so I introduce log on both sides to come up with N being equal to 40.4964 years. So that is that was all level work. Now we shall go to our interest where one has to deposit every year. At a compound interest. So suppose an amount P is deposited at the beginning of every year for N years without withdrawals at a rate of R per annum, R percent per annum. Let a N be the amount that would be received after N years if no depositing was done. Know this word if no depositing was done at the beginning of each year and no withdrawals made during these N years. So that formula will be the same formula I've been using previously. Therefore, if the same amount P is deposited at the beginning of every year, not this word, beginning of every year, the total amount after n years, a total is given by the formula that a total is equal to the summation of a n from n equal to 1 to n equal to n, where n is an integer. Now why do we put the summation? So here's the reason. Let's suppose that I am depositing, I start depositing at the beginning of 2001 and I want to get the amount and I want to remove that amount at the end of 2005. Therefore, this B means beginning of 2005 to beginning of the year and this E means end of the year. So if I deposit the one amount which I the principal which I deposited at the beginning of 2001 by the end of 2005 there will be 5 years for example this is 1 year 2 years 3 years 4 years 5 years that is why you see here a 5 but remember I deposit at the beginning of every year so that means that when I reach beginning of 2002 I will also deposit and at the end by 2005 it will have taken 4 years the one I deposited in 2003 will have taken 3 years, which is here. The one I deposited in 2004 will have taken 2 years, which is here. And the one I deposited at the beginning of 2005 will have taken 1 year. Now that is the reason, so therefore the total amount which I will get at this time will be the summation of all this. So basically that is why we add. So each time you see the word depositing every year, just know that you have to add
now summation sign I will add n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3 and so on until n is equal to n to give you our total but remember we know the formula for a is this if this is 1 here the power is also 1 2 the power is also 2, 3 the power is also 3 n the power is also n now this p is common for all that is why it has been put outside so if you look at this one inside this box bracket you realize that it is a geometric progression so by now I believe you know what a geometric progression is so where a the, the first term is this and also the common ratio is that because when I divide this by this the same base I will subtract the powers to remain with the power 1 so it will be the same as 1 plus r over 100 therefore if I maintain this p whatever is inside this box bracket will be equal to this because this is a formula for summation of a geometric progression. Note that this expression can be quoted only if the amount deposited every year is equal to that deposited at the beginning of the first year. Otherwise, one has to calculate from first principles. So the amount deposited, you must make sure that it is the same as the one deposited at the beginning of the very first year. Now with that knowledge, let's go through a number of questions from the question bank. So question 1 came from your neighbor, 2006 per power 1, question 15b and says, A man deposits shillings 150,000 at the beginning of every year. So this is the keyword every year. In a microfinance with the understanding that at the end of 7 years, he is paid back his money with 5% per annum compound interest. How much does he receive? So first of all, the rate was 5. Principal is the one amount deposited and N is 7 years. So once you know that, you shall come and see that amount at the beginning of the end, at the end of the nth year for each depositing is given by that formula. I believe by now you know that formula. But remember, ours is depositing every year. Therefore, you have to get the total amount being a total and is equal to a1, a2 up to a7 because they are 7 years. The known substitute for a1, I'll come up with this, a2, I'll come up with this, a7, I'll come up with that. And p is that. Simplifying, I'll come up with that. So this is now a geometric progression. Therefore, I can use the formula for GP, which is this, and substitute for A and R and N to come up with that. Therefore, when I use the calculator, the amount will be that. So, question 2 came from your neighbor, 2008, paper 1, question 15b, and says, A financial credit society gives a 2% compound interest per annum to its members. If Ochola deposits shillings 100,000, at the beginning of every year, starting with 2004, how much would he collect after 2008 if there are no withdrawals within this period? So the rate was 2%, principal is that 100,000, and N will be 5 years. Because 2004, beginning, end of 2004, that will be one year. 2005, two years. Two th sorry, two th yes, 2006, three years. 2007, four years. 2008, five years. Therefore, amount at the end of the nth year for each depositing is given by that. So, in already know that formula. But our interest is the total amount. So the total amount will be adding A1, A2 up to A5. So when I substitute P is that, then here for N equal to 1, I'll come up with that. N equal to 2 and A5 is that. When I simplify, I'll come up with that. So this is a geometric progression. Therefore, I'll substitute in the formula for GP to give me that. When I use a calculator, the amount will be that. 
Then question 3 came from UNEB 2006 paper 1 question 15b and says a credit society gives out a compound interest of 4.5% per annum. Mugaga deposits shilling 300,000 at the beginning of each year. How much money will he have at the end of 4 years if there are no withdrawals in this period? So the rate is 4.5, principal is 300,000 and N is 4 years. So at the end of the nth year, for each depositing, you already know that formula. Therefore, our interest is the total amount. So a total will be a1, a2, a3, a4. So I'll come and substitute. For a1 is that, p is the same. So a2, a3, a4. Now because these are very few years, that's why I'm, I've not used, I'm not going to use the formula for GP because you can easily add all these years because they are few. So when I add all, when I simplify this, I'll come up with that. And when I use a calculator, I'll come up with that amount. So when the number of N is big, that is when you use the formula for GP. Then question 4 came from your name, November 1998, paper 1, question 10b, and says 5 million shillings are invested each year at a rate of 15% interest. In how many years will it accumulate to more than 50 million? So rate is 15% and P is 5 million. And then amount must be more than 50 million. Therefore, at the end of the nth year for each depositing, a n will be given by that formula. Our interest is the total amount, so a total will be a1, a2 up to a n. But you know that a total must be more than 50 million. Therefore, comma substitute, a total will be the whole of this and should be more greater than 50 million. Therefore, when I take this 5 million this side, I'll come up with 10. Now this is a geometric progression with A equal to 1.15 and R equal to 1.15. So when I use the formula for GP, I'll come up with this, therefore substitute for A and R to come up with that. Now my aim is to make N the subject, so that 1.15 to power N is equal to that. Now this is a variable power, so I'll introduce in logarithm. Therefore, n is greater than that. Using a calculator, n will be greater than that. And therefore, because n is an integer, it will be 6 years. So now shall I go to question 5, which came from your name, 1995. Paper 1, question 3b, and says, Jack operates an account with a certain bank, which pays a compound interest rate of 13.5% per annum. He opened an account at the beginning of the year with 500,000 and deposits the same amount of money at the beginning of every year. Roman 1, calculate how much you will receive at the end of 9 years. Then Roman 2, after how long will the money have accumulated to shillings 3.32 million? So let's start with the Roman one with where they want the total amount at the end of nine years. So R was that, the rate was that, principal was that, and N is nine. So amount at the end of the nth year for each depositing is given by that formula which you already know. But our interest is the total amount. So a total amount will be A1, A2 up to A9. So when I substitute, I'll come up with that, simplify to come up with that. So this is a geometric progression, therefore it will become, I'll use that formula where A and R is equal to 1.135. So substituting gives me that, and when I use a calculator, I'll come up with that as the required amount. So Roman 2 said, after how long will the money have accumulated to 3.32 million?
So we are coming to that for the money to accumulate to 3.32 million, principal is 0.5 million, so 500,000 is the same as 0.5 million, and total amount is now 3.32. Therefore, the, I'll code the formula. I already know that a total is equal to this from the from Roman 1. Therefore, this amount is that, principal is that, a is that, r is that, so I'm only looking for n. So when I make this one the subject, it implies that this this times this will go this side to become division, then this one will go this side to become application. Then when I make this the subject, I'll come up with this. The, but the power is variable, so I'll introduce in logarithm. And the years will be 4.5968 years. Question 6 came from your name, 1989, paper 1, question 2b, and says, Mokasa deposits shillings 1,000 in a bank at the, at the beginning of every year for 10 years. How much does he receive at the end of 10 years if he is paid a compound interest of 12.5% per annum? So the rate is 12.5%, principal is that, and N is that. Therefore, amount at the beginning, at the end of the nth year for each depositing is given by that formula, which you already know. But our interest is the total amount, so the total will be a1, a2, up to a10. When I substitute, I'll come up with that. And when I simplify, I'll come up with that. So what is in the box bracket is a GP. So we shall use the formula for a GP, where a and r are equal to 1.125. So substituting for a and r and a, and I'll come up with that using calculator. I'll come up with that. So that was depositing every year. So now we shall go to another part called mathematical induction for finite series. So the sums of certain finite series can be proved by the method of induction. This method can only be used to prove that a given expression is the required sum because the method does not produce the expression itself. We shall see how that is done. So, in general, the following steps must be followed in any proof or by mathematical induction. One Step 1 is first verify that the sum is varied for the first two possible case usually n equal to 1 and n is equal to 2. Then step 2 is suppose, so this word is very vital, suppose that the sum is varied for n is equal to k. Why? Because there is no way you can prove that it is varied for n is equal to k, so we have to just suppose. And then prove that it is also valid for n equal to k plus 1. For n equal to k plus 1 it is possible after supposing. And step three is to state the conclusion. So we shall see how these steps are carried out. So question one came from UNEP 2016, paper one, question 15a, and says, prove by induction that this is equal to this for all integral values of n. So step one, we have to test if it is true or if the expression is valid for n equal to one and n is equal to two. Now. Setting the setting proof showing that it's valid requires you to get the right hand side and left hand side and see if they are equal. So for the left hand side, the sum for n equal to one is the first term. So n equal to one for the left hand side means term. So it will be one times three, which is three. Then for the right hand side, it implies that you substitute for n where there is n here, here, and here. So we'll come up with this. So when I substitute in here, it will be 1. Here it will be 2. And here it will be 9. So when I simplify the whole of this, I'll come up with 3. Now I realize that left hand side is equal to right hand side and they're all equal to 3. Therefore, it is true for n is equal to 1. What about for n is equal to 2? n is equal to 2. For the left hand side, it means that you are going to add the first two terms. So when I do that, I'll come up with 11. What about right hand side? Right hand side, you substitute where there is n, you put there 2. So also come up with 11, meaning that is true for n equal to 2. So that was step 1. Now we shall go to step 2. 
remember step two we said we only suppose so this word has to be seen suppose it's true for n equal to k that means that where there is n we are going to put there k if you look at the above series if you look at this above series where there is n he n n n we are going to replace it with k k k because n is equal to k then they also told us that we have to prove for n equal to k plus 1. So for n equal to k plus 1, right hand side, it implies that where are those n, you are going to put there k plus 1. So that is k plus 1 here. k plus 1 plus 1 gives you k plus 2. Then here, 2 in brackets, k plus 1, the same as 2k plus 2. So 2k plus 2 plus 7 gives you 2k plus 9. That is right hand side. What about left hand side? Left hand side, it means that you are going to add all the k plus 1 terms. So these ones are k terms. So you have to add on the next term to make k plus 1. So this next term is got from this general formula. So where there is k, you put there k plus 1, also your k plus 1. That is how you can get the next term. But the good thing you have already supposed that the whole of this is equal to that. So we are going to replace it with that. So when we do that, we shall, we shall come up with that line. Now next is to factorize, to see that to sim factorize and simplify until we get this same expression. Because we said for it to prove, left hand side must be equal to right hand side. Now if you compare this with what we have, there is 1 over 6 and there is k plus 1. So what we are going to do, we are going to first get the LCM. When you get the LCM, LCM is 6, put it here. So the whole of this will be here. Then here we shall see be 6 times the whole of this to come up with this. So in that case, we have got 1 over 6. And also 1 over, and also k plus 1 is common because it is here and it is also here. So when we pull out 1 over 6 and k plus 1, inside we shall remain with this. Because here it will be, this one has already gone, this one has already gone, so k times this gives you 2k squared, then k times this gives you 7k. Then here, 6 times this gives you 6k, and 6 times this gives you 18. So now we have got, so far, these first two, but these ones we have not yet got them. So we have to simplify this bracket until we get this. So that can be done by factorization. So that gives you that. So this is a quadratic. Therefore, you look for sum, two factors whose sum is 13 and product is 36. 2 times 18 is 36. Those two factors are 4 and 9. So where there was 13, you replace it with 4 and 9. Then you are going to factorize by grouping. For these two, the common factor is 2k. So 2k, pull it out. Here I remain with k, and here I remain with 2. Then here the common factor is 9. So 9, pull it out. Here I remain with k, here I remain with 2. After that, you realize that k plus 2 is common for both. So you pull it out to remain with 2k plus 9, which is here. So if you realize, you find out that the left hand side is equal to because this very expression is the same expression which we had got for right hand side that means that left hand side is equal to right hand side therefore we shall say that it's true for n is equal to k plus one so that is step two now we shall go to step three where i have to set a uh, conclusion so conclusion says since it's true for n equal to one n equal to two and n equal to k and n equal to k plus one then it is true for all positive integers of n. So that is how this conclusion is stated. So we shall go to question 2, which came from UNEB 2007, paper 1, question 14b, and says, prove by induction that this, that this is equal to this, where n is a whole number. So the first thing to do is to expand this series. To expand, you will say, Put one here to come up with this. Put one here to come up with this. That is the first term. Second term is when R is 2. Put two here to come up with this. Put two here to come up with this. And the nth term is when R is n. So put n here to come up with this. And put n here to come up with this. 
this side remains as n over n plus 1. So now that you have got the series which, are, which is understandable, we shall go through the steps. The first step is to find out if it is true for n equal to 1 and n is equal to k. So for n equal to 1, left hand side you need the first term alone, which is a half. But for right hand side you substitute where there is n, you put there 1, you come up with, with a half, meaning that is true for n equal to 1. What about for n equal to 2? n equal to 2 left hand side means that you take the first two terms to give you 2 over 3. Right hand side means where there is n, you put there 2 to come up with 2 over 3. So it is true for n equal to 2. Now so the second step is to first suppose that it's true for n equal to k. Therefore you write the series where n is equal to k. So where there is n, I'll put there k. That is supposing, then here we shall say that for n equal to k plus 1, right hand side where there is k, now put there k plus 1, k plus 1. That is right hand side. What about left hand side? Left hand side means that you have to add all the k plus 1 terms. From here to here, these are k terms. So the next term after this, it means that where there is k, you put there k plus 1, where there is k, you put k plus 1. That is how you get the next term. But the whole of this, we have already supposed that it's the same as this. Therefore, I come and substitute to come up with that line. Then when I get the LCM, LCM will be k plus 1, k plus 2. This divided by this, k plus 1 cancels. So this times this gives you that. Then for this, the whole of this cancels, so remain with only one, which is that. So when I open brackets here, I'll come up with this, and this, the whole of this, the same as k plus 1 squared. So when 1k one, one plus 1 goes with this, you remain with k plus 1 over k plus 2. So you realize that this left hand side is the same as right hand side, meaning that it's true for n is equal to k plus 1. Therefore, that is step 2. Now, third step 3 is to conclude. So I'll conclude that by saying, since it's true for n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to k, and n equal to k plus 1, then it is true for all positive integers of n. So the conclusion is always the same. So now I shall go to question 3, which came from your neb 2004, paper 1, question 7, and says, Prove by induction that this is equal to this, where n is a whole number. So the first thing to do is to generate the series from this summation symbol. So that means that when you put r equal to 1 here, you'll come up with 3 to power 0. Put r is equal to 2, you'll come up with 3 to power 1. Put r equal to 3, you'll come up with 3 to power 2, and so on. So when you put r equal to n, you'll come up with 3 to power n minus 1. So now that I've got the series which we know, let's start with step 1. So step 1 for n equal to 1, left hand side is equal to this first term which is 1 and number to power 0 is 1. Right hand side where there is n put there 1, you'll come up with 1. Therefore it is true for n equal to 1. What about for n equal to 2? For n equal to 2, left hand side you are going to add these two terms to come up with 4. Right hand side where there is n you put there 2 to come up with this. So it is true for n equal to 2. So next is to suppose, suppose it's true for n equal to k, that series now becomes that. So where there is n, you put there k. Then we shall come and say that for n equal to k plus 1, right hand side is equal to that. So where there is k here, you are going to replace it with k plus 1. What about left hand side? Left hand side, you, you have to add all the k plus 1 terms. So these ones are the first k terms, and the next term will be got from here. So where there is k, put there k plus 1 to be k plus 1 minus 1, which remains as k. But the whole of this, well, the regular, we suppose that it's the same as this, so you shall replace it with that. Then we get the LCM to come up with this line. So here we shall collect like terms. Remember, this is 3k, 3, sorry, 2 times 3 to power k plus 3 to power k. So this and this gives you 3 times 3 to power k. Then from indices, this, this one gives you 3 to power k plus 1 which is the same as this. So that means that it is true for n, n is equal to k plus 1. Therefore, next is to conclude that since it is true for n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to k, and n equal to k plus 1, then it is true for all positive integers of n. 
So now we shall go to question 4 which came from UNEB 1991 paper 1 question 1b and says prove by induction that this is equal to that. So for n equal to 1, left hand side is equal to p and right hand side where there is n you put there 1. So we'll end up with p so true for n equal to 1. For n equal to 2, left hand side is equal to this which gives you that. What about right hand side? Right hand side where there is n you put there 2. Then here, this numerator, there is difference of two squares. That's why you see a subtraction and addition. Then this goes with this. You remain with p times this, which is that. So it is true for n equal to 2. Next is to suppose that it is true for n equal to k. Therefore, the series will now become that. Then for n equal to k plus 1, right-hand side will be that. So where there is k, you put there k plus 1. What about left-hand side? You add all these ones and add on the next term. So next time is got from this where there is k you put k plus 1 so k plus 1 minus 1 gives you k that's why you see a k alone. But you already know that the whole of this is equal to this so you come and substitute there. Get the LCM to come up with this. Expand to come up with that. Collect like terms to come up with this. Factorize out p to come up with that. And basically that is what the you realize that it's the same as the right hand side therefore it is true for n equal to k plus 1 next is to conclude since n is equal to since it's true for n equal to 1 n equal to 2 n equal to k and n equal to k plus 1 then it is true for all positive integers of n so now shall go to question 5 which came from uneb 2001 paper 1 question 10a and says it can be proved not that word they don't want you to prove they have said it can be proved that all, for all positive n, this is equal to this. From this result, deduce. Now they no longer want you to prove by induction. They only want you to deduce that this is equal to that. So if you realize, this n plus 1 is the next term after this. So after n, you go to n plus 1. So this is like a continuation of this. Therefore, we shall come and say this is what is given so it is already known that that is true therefore if it is from 1 up to 2n we shall come up with this series and to how is what will be its sum the sum will be remember here it was ending at n that is why you see here n n now when it is ending at 2n it means that where there is n you put there 2n where there is n you put there 2n But the whole of this, we already know it, that is equal to this. So come and put it here. The next is to take this one, this side, to come up with this. Now next is to simplify this. So simplifying, I'll get the LC, factorize out a quarter and n squared. This a quarter is common and n squared is common. So I'll pull it out. Here I remain with 4, which is 2 squared. Then... 2n plus 1 squared then here it will be n plus 1 squared so for these two terms you realize there is a difference of two squares therefore I'll come up with two brackets one with a subtraction another one with the addition then simplify this, bo this box bracket to come up with this simplify this to come up with this Sim collect like terms to come up with so this one gives you this and this one gives you that and basically that is what they wanted so now we shall go to the next part which is mathematical induction for divisible functions. So to prove that a function of n is divisible by a given value or positive integer can be proved by the method of induction where n denotes a positive integers. The following steps must be followed in any proof by mathematical induction. One, first verify that the function is divisible for the first two possible cases, usually n equal to 1 and n equal to 2. Then step 2, suppose that the function is divisible for n equal to k. Then prove that it is also divisible for n equal to k plus 1. Then lastly, state the conclusion. So this is somewhat similar to the one for proof by induction for finite series. So let's see. Question 1 came from UNEB 2000, paper 1, question 10a. And it says... Prove by induction that this is always divisible by 7 
for n greater than or equal to 2. So in this case it is starting from 2 meaning that the first two cases will be n equal to 2 and n equal to 3. So let fn be equal to this given function. Therefore f2 will be equal to 7 and 7 is same as 7 times 1. That means that it is divisible by 7 for n equal to 2. What about n equal to 3? For n equal to 3, f3 will be equal to 35 and 35 is the same as 7 times 5 meaning that it is divisible for n equal to 3. Now next is to suppose. Suppose it is divisible for n equal to k. That means that fk will be equal to this where there is n we shall put there k and because we have said that it is, we are supposing that it is divisible that is why we put here 7 times any value just as we have been doing in in, in this part. So it was 7 times the value, 7 times the number. So here we are supposing so it is 7 times the number which we also don't know. Therefore when I make this the subject I come up with this. So simplify further you will come up with this using indices. Therefore we have to also, de we have to also explain what A is. So A is a positive integer. Now for n equal to k plus 1, we shall come and get fk plus 1 being equal to this. So by indices, this is somewhat remains that, but this one can be simplified to come up with this. Then also this one can be written as this, and this can be written as that. But the good thing we know that 2k, 2 to power k is equal to this from the previous slide. Therefore, when I substitute, I come up with that. Then open this bracket. I'll come up with that because this is two to power sorry three to power negative three is the same as one over twenty seven. So one over twenty seven times two gives you two over twenty seven times this which is here. And when I then this one negative two over twenty seven plus one over three is the same as seven over twenty seven. And this fourteen a remains there. So in this I'll realize that 7 is common, so I'll factorize it out to remain with this. Therefore, since 7 is, since this is a multiple of 7, it imply that it is divisible by 7 for n equal to k plus 1. Next is to conclude. So, since it is divisible for n equal to 2, n equal to 3, and n equal to k, and n equal to k plus 1, then fn is divisible for by 7 for n greater than or equal to 2. Then question 2 says prove by induction that this is divisible by 14 for all positive for integral values of n. So we are going to go through the same procedure. Let fn be equal to the given function. Then f1 will give you this 14 which is 14 times 1. True for n equal to 1. What about f2? f2 gives you 70 which is true for n equal to 2. Now next is to suppose that it's divisible for n equal to k, therefore that means that fk will be equal to 14 times a value, a positive integer which is n, which is a. Make h to power k the subject will come up with that, where a is a positive integer. What about for n equal to k plus 1? For n equal to k plus 1, fk plus 1 gives you this, simplify to come up with that. But the good thing I really know that h to power k is this. Therefore, come and substitute for h to power k to come up with that line. Open brackets, come up with that. Then this one, the common factor is for 14 is a common. Therefore, factorize it out to remain with 8a minus 3. Therefore, it is divisible for n equal to k plus 1 by 14 because 14 is a multiple. So next is to conclude that since it is divisible for n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to k, and n equal to k plus 1, then fn is divisible by 14 for all positive integral values of n. So the conclusion must be seen. Now we shall go to question 3, which is that prove by induction that this is divisible by 3 for all positive integral values of n. So the first step is to let fn be equal to that, then substitute for n equal to 1 to come up with this, so true for n equal to, to 1. n equal to 2, it is that, so divisible for n equal to 2. The next is to suppose, 
it is true for n equal to k, therefore fk will give you that, which is equal to 3 times n positive integer. Make 4 to power k the subject, you come up with that. What about for n equal to k plus 1? So n equal to k plus 1, you'll come up with fk plus 1 being equal to this. From by indices, this is the same as that. The good thing I know 4 to power k is equal to 3a plus 1, therefore common substitute to come up with that, open brackets to come up with that. So factorize out 3, you'll come up with this, therefore it is true for n equal to k plus 1. Next is to conclude that since it is divisible for n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to k, and n equal to k plus 1, then fn is divisible by 3 for all positive integral values of n. So now shall go to question 4, which says that prove by induction that this is divisible by 9 for all positive integral values of n. So the first thing to do is to let fn be equal to the given function, then f1 gives you that, therefore true for n equal to 1, f2 gives you that, which is true for n equal to 2. Therefore suppose that it is divisible for n equal to k, we shall come up with that, where a is a positive integer. Therefore 10 to power k will give you that. Simplify will come up with that. What about n equal to k plus 1? So n equal to k plus 1, fk plus 1 gives you that. By indices, this is the same as this, and this is the same as that. So the good thing, we know the value of 10 to power k, therefore come and substitute it, and then expand, and simplify, then factorize out 9. Therefore it is true for n equal to k plus 1. So now next is to conclude. So just that since it is divisible for n equal to 1, n equal to 2, and n equal to k, and n equal to k plus 1, then fn is divisible by 9 for all positive integral values of n. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and be reminded that the next video will be on permutation and combination. So if you are not yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video on permutation and combinations has been uploaded. And also, if you know of any student who is not yet on this platform, please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp so that we can all benefit as a family.